Hi everyone, it's Nicole and we're gonna do something a little different today. First of all, you get to see my face, which I don't know if that's a good thing or not, but I don't just like um, crafting. I love cooking too and I've had several people, because when we do lives and stuff, people, we talk about food. We talk about a lot of food and I've had several people say, oh, you should share your recipe. So I thought it would be fun to actually film when I cook it and then I'll share my recipes that way. But you can also go to my blog, NicoleJones911.com and I will have the recipe there. Now, it's not gonna be like your typical place where you go and find recipes and you have to scroll and scroll. Like I'm just gonna have the recipe, very little verbiage, just basically what the ingredients you need and you know what you need to do. So today, what we're gonna be making, and I do this once a month. I make a spaghetti sauce once a month and then I make it in this big pot and then I put it in the freezer and then, you know, when I don't feel like cooking, I can just grab the sauce and then supper's done. So I'll just go through some of the ingredients that, or all the ingredients that I'm gonna put in that spaghetti sauce. Usually we get our hamburger at Costco, but when we went, they were out. Like they, there wasn't a thing of hamburger in the whole store. So what we had to do, we had to go to a different store and we had to buy three packages to match what's in one of the packages. So I have seven and a half pounds of hamburger right here. Then I cut about, I don't know, seven or eight celery stalks. Usually when I cook my hamburger, I sprinkle some garlic on the hamburger, but today I'm gonna cut some fresh garlic because I have a ton of garlic. That's only three, but my husband bought me the big package that you can get at Costco. So I need to start using the garlic. This is just plus that big package. And two onions. And then two cans of mushroom. And I usually like the whole mushrooms and I cut it up. I find the mushrooms that's already cut up, they're not, they're usually brown and kind of gross. So I like the whole mushrooms and I just cut them up myself. Usually I put one pepper, but man, these peppers are small. So I think that's why my husband got me two. So I'm gonna put two peppers in there. And then for spices, we have basil, we have crushed red pepper, we have bay leaves, we have thyme, we have Italiano, and we have oregano. Now, I'm gonna try and put the amount that I put in, but you're gonna see when I make it, I don't measure out spoonfuls. I literally just sprinkle, but I can say, you know, that's about a tablespoon. We'll, we'll go with that. And I have to say my spaghetti sauce is super spicy. We like spicy food, so I would, you know, pull back on the crushed red pepper and maybe the Italiano, so then it's not as um, spicy. Now I use some diced tomatoes, six cans, sometimes five, it just depends on how much hamburger I have, but usually it's five or six cans. I go by the feel more than, you know, how much I actually open up. And then tomato sauce, and again, this is a small can, so I got two, usually it's a big can and I just put one in. And then one can of tomato paste. And again, if I find that it's too watery, I'll add a second can. But we're gonna start with this and then we'll go from there. Okay, so we're gonna start with dicing our veggies. Now I've washed all the celery stock and the green peppers and I like to dice them. Now, I usually don't do this the day of, and the only reason I'm doing it the day that I'm actually doing the spaghetti sauce this time is because we couldn't find hamburger when my husband went to Costco to pick up the stuff to make the spaghetti sauce. There was no hamburger. So I didn't want to cut this, and I didn't know when we'd be able to get hamburger. So, uh, and actually, you know, it took like three days for my husband to be able to go to another grocery store to actually get it. So if I would have cut this ahead of time, you know, 
things doesn't stay as fresh once it's all cut apart. So I liked to dice them, I guess, pretty small. So I cut it in three and I just find that it cooks faster that way because that spaghetti sauce, it needs to cook for a few hours. Now, usually what I do is I cook my hamburger at the same time as I dice this. But I thought I would start dicing and just chat for a bit, and then I'll be cooking the hamburger. But my favorite way is, like I said, if I know I'm gonna make the spaghetti sauce, let's say tomorrow, the night before, we'll sit, my husband and I, and we'll cut up everything. And then I just put it in the fridge. And then the next day, it makes making the spaghetti sauce so much easier because all I have to do is cook the hamburger, then I throw all the veggies in, and that's it. And yes, it's a lot of cutting because I make a lot of spaghetti sauce, but I figure, you know, if I'm gonna make this, why not make some enough that I can freeze and then we have enough for the month instead of making just a little one and then you know, I have to make it four times in the month. So I make it once and it lasts us all month because it makes like, well, we'll have spaghetti tonight. And then it makes like probably four or five packages in the freezer. And usually what I do also is my second daughter, she loves the spaghetti sauce, but her husband doesn't like spaghetti. So what I do is I make her some one portion uh, spaghetti sauce. And then, you know, some nights when he wants to eat something else or for lunch, if she's home, uh, if, if it's a day off, then she'll eat the spaghetti sauce or make spaghetti. Now, um, most of the time we eat the spaghetti on spaghetti noodles. But a lot of times, or sometimes, I'll eat it on spaghetti squash, you know, to try to cut down those carbs. And as a matter of fact, I prefer spaghetti squash. It's just, it's hard to have spaghetti squash on hand all the time. What I should do is wait till they're in season so then they're, they're not as expensive, and then just cook a whole bunch and freeze it. That's what I'm gonna do next time they're in season. I'm just gonna cut or cook a whole bunch and then put it in freezer bags for like one portion. My husband, it's not his favorite. He'll eat it, but it's not his favorite. So uh, if I make it in one portion and then I just have it when we have spaghetti, I would much prefer having spaghetti swap squash than noodles. Now, let's talk a little bit about what I'm gonna do on this channel. So if you're new to my channel, welcome. If you found me through cooking, my channel has been mainly uh, crafting. So scrapbooking, a bit about reading, and like books that I read and that kind of thing. And then also uh, diamond painting, but we all need to eat. And I don't know about you, but eating the same things over and over again, it gets kind of old. <laughs> so one thing I wanna do is share with you some of my favorite recipes, because maybe you'll find a favorite too, but also, um, find some new ones. So we'll try out some new recipes and I'll tell you what I think about them, whether they were hard to make or if they were easy to make and if they were good, if they were tasty. And like I said, some days I like to eat spaghetti squash, but we're not keto. It's just, I try to think a little bit about, you know, not eating too much carbs. And I'm trying to get back into, I wouldn't call it working out, but I love walking 
And right now where I live, I live in Canada and we have a lot of snow. So walking, it's, it's not very safe right now because if we go on our street or on our road, it's not really a street, it's a road. Um, it's not safe to walk because the road is super icy and there's not, there's no sidewalks. So I live in the country, so there's no sidewalks. So it's dangerous to, to walk. So I'm, I want to get back and I've, I've started this week. Actually, I've gone every day and I'm going to, I have an echelon, a bike. So I've been going every day and man, am I ever out of shape. <laughs> So one thing I'm going to try to do is make recipes and you know that maybe you can have it with rice, but you can also have with just like veggies. So I'm going to try and make some freezer meals and maybe I'll work up to a big freezer meal videos where I'm making like 20 meals. But for now, where this is kind of new for me and I'm just trying to kind of get um, kind of get a grip of what I'm doing. Filming for this is very different than filming for, you know, when I make a scrapbooking page. So today we're going to make spaghetti sauce. And another one that has been in highly demand for me to, to share is we make a sesame chicken. And oh my goodness, that's delicious. So I don't know if that's going to be the next thing I'm going to do. But I'm definitely going to share uh, how to make your own taco seasoning, how to make seasoned salt, how to... I've been doing a lot of research in the last, I don't know, about a year, I would say, on just... I mean, I've been married for almost 30 years, so I've been cooking for a long time. But you can always learn something new, so... I've been doing a lot of research on different things, just try to make stuff as homemade as possible. With everything that's going on right now, um, we usually order out or did take out like maybe once a week. And with this new wave, we don't want to go to the, you know, to restaurants. So I've been cooking a whole lot more. So I've been making a lot of stuff to put in our freezer and it's been helping a lot. So I'll share those recipes with you guys. I made a bunch of different meatballs. I did Swedish sweet and sour and jalapeno meatballs. Oh my lanta, so good. And then I made a few chicken recipes too where I just marinate you know, some chicken in the freezer. So once a week, I think for now, is what I'll try to aim on sharing different recipes. Once a week. We'll start with once a week and see how that goes. So, okay. So I'm going to keep cutting some veggies here. And then... I forgot one right here. And then we'll move on to the next step. Okay, so I have my garbage bag over just over yonder. And what I'm doing is I kind of throw out stuff as I go so that everything, I kind of do the cleanup as I go. Now I like to cut the top the top off my green pepper and then you stick your hand in there and you twist and it basically cleans it right out. So I love that. So now I'm just going to cut these green peppers and cut these onions and I'm gonna cut a whole garlic head. And while I'm doing that, I like to listen to an audiobook. And right now I'm listening to Outlander. So I'm going to be putting in my earbud and I'm going to be listening to Outlander while I cut these veggies.
Okay, so now that I have all my canned tomatoes all open, I'm gonna put them all in the pot. So once I have all my tomatoes in there, I take my potato masher and I just go through it and just mash it some more just to help release some of the juice from the tomatoes. And I don't want, even though they're diced, they're still pretty big. So I'm gonna take a few minutes and mash all these up and then we'll move on to the next step. So now I have all my tomatoes in there and I've mushed them and I've added one can of tomato sauce. So here's the other can of tomato sauce. I'm gonna add the tomato paste in. add the tomato paste and then I'll add all the veggies that I've cut up to now. Okay, I don't know if you heard the dog but he just kind of barked there. <laughs> he's in another room but he's got quite the hefty bark. Okay. So we have all, I only put five cans of tomato up to now because it's not my usual pack of hamburger. I'm just afraid that I don't have as much hamburger as I normally do. Now I'll add all the veggies. I'll add all the veggies that I've cut up to now in there just so I have more room. And usually I start cooking my hamburger while I'm doing these, but where I wanted to use fresh garlic today, I probably should have cut my garlic first because I want to cook the garlic when I cook the hamburger. Garlic is one of those ingredients that adds so much flavor to your food. And it's you know best to use the fresh stuff instead of the powder. But I have to say, it is quite annoying. <laughs> To peel all those and to chop them but since I've done this spaghetti sauce I went on a search again to find something that would make taking the husk off so much easier and in my or on my Amazon link I did link down a silicone roller I've since you know, purchased it and I've used it. When I do my next recipe, you'll see that I'm using it and what a game changer. You just roll it and it takes the husk off the garlic. And it's so easy to use. And even, you know, as soon as I got it in the mail, I took a few cloves of garlic and I was trying it out and I was just rolling garlic just so that I could, you know, practice taking the husk off and I was like oh my goodness now I'm going I mean I use I put garlic in everything I cook but now it's going to be so much easier to do those and you know when a recipe says to use one or two cloves of garlic I usually put seven or eight like I just love garlic in my food and the last thing left to cut is two cans of mushroom. And I like to buy the whole mushrooms because I find that the mushrooms that are already sliced, I find the mushrooms are all black and kind of gooey and disgusting. But the whole mushroom, they're a nice size, you know, mushroom and they're nice and white. And I just like to cut them though in little pieces. Okay, now I'm gonna start cooking the hamburger. Like I said, usually it's one big package, but we'll go with what we got. And I'll get my wooden spoon. Here's the wooden spoon. I'm gonna cook it for a bit and then I'll add the garlic. Like I said, usually I add garlic powder this time I decided <clears throat> that I would add real garlic because I have a ton. I'm going to add some salt. So every time I cook each thing of hamburger, I'm going to add salt and garlic. Okay. 
Okay, so while the hamburger's cooking, I got all my veggies in here, and I just turned it on low, medium low, and I'm gonna start warming up the spaghetti sauce, because all those veggies, they all have to cook. So like I said, it's going to take a few hours. Usually, I start this like at nine o'clock in the morning, 8.30 in the morning, and this morning, I slept in. So here it is noon, and I'm just now starting to cook it. Now, what I'm going to do is start adding the spices. I usually add about four times or three times. So this is what I do. This is how I measure. I go like this, and then I go through all my spices. So that was Italiano. And I go through all my spices, and I kind of cover the top a little bit. So this was basil. This is oregano. So I'd say it's a tablespoon every time. I had to guess. And then we got thyme. And I know that that um, Italiano has a lot of that stuff, but I just like adding extra. And then crushed red peppers. Okay. And then I mix everything in. And I don't put the bay leaves in it until all the hamburger is in it because, you know, I'm going to have to stir this quite a bit and I don't want the leaves to break up. Okay. I have spilled some tomato juice on my stove so it's kind of sparkling here. I'm just going to lift it, move it, and dry it up. There we go. Okay, so now we're going to let this simmer and cook for, like I said, a few hours. It'll be ready for supper time, so about three or four hours. And I always start to cook that because remember I said that a lot of times I'll cut up my veggies the night before. So the morning of, all I have to do is cook the hamburger. So while I'm cooking the hamburger, I just dump everything in and then I start letting the veggies start to simmer. And it takes about an hour for me to cook all that hamburger, about an hour. And like I said, I'm hoping I have the same amount of hamburger as I normally do. I just know that normally the package is about $25, $26. And this, my husband said it was about the same price. So, and this, they were about eight or $9 each package. And I think there's about six, and a half, seven pounds in one of those Costco uh, packages, the big ones. So I think we have pretty much the same amount of hamburger. Okay, so I'm gonna add some garlic at this point. So between all the hamburger, I wanna make sure that I add that whole garlic. I could cook it all in the in the one, but the garlic will give the hamburger some taste. Like it'll give it some flavor, I guess is what I'm trying to say. So that's why I'm gonna divide it between all. I'm kind of wondering if I shouldn't put a little bit. I know I got some fresh garlic, but I still wanna put a little bit of the powder. I'm gonna put a little bit of the powder. There we go. Old habits are hard to break. Okay, so I'm cooking still the hamburger. I'm still on that first, <laughs> first one. And I cook it so that it's browned, like caramelized. So I make sure that it's well cooked. And when you caramelize it, it's 
so you get brown pieces, you get extra flavor. So make sure that I nice and cook it. But while I'm waiting, I'm going to go ahead with round two of adding spices. It's been about, I'd say, 20 minutes. And that's how I make sure, I guess, that I add the same every time. And my spaghetti sauce tastes the same every single time. <laughs> so obviously, it's working. I would say, yeah, that's about a tablespoon each time. And then I stir that, and I wait another 15 minutes or so, and then I add the third one. I like each layer of spices to simmer for a bit. So here we go. Now this batch of hamburger is ready. So we will dump it in. And then we'll stir it in once I get my next batch on. Now we'll do the same thing. We'll cook it for a bit and then we'll add some garlic and I'll add a bit of salt. So each thing of hamburger, I make sure that it's nice and spiced. I don't know how loud that is but <laughs> I usually have my fan on but I didn't figure you'd be able to hear me with the fan on. We'll stir that in and now the spaghetti sauce is starting to have some thickness to it. I'll probably need that sixth can for sure. Okay, so while the hamburger's cooking and the spaghetti sauce, I'm gonna make some bread. And I like to make the dough in my bread maker, but only the dough. Then I let it rise outside the bread maker. I don't like bread that the bread maker makes, but I like using the bread maker. So I put a cup of water and it's gotta be at 110 degrees. Then I put two tablespoons of sugar and two and a quarter teaspoon of yeast. Now the sugar is gonna make the yeast, activate the yeast, I guess. So then what you do is you just leave it for 10 minutes. And when I spread the yeast, I make sure that I use the whole surface. And then I put 10 minutes on my timer and then I let it do its thing for 10 minutes. Okay, so it's been sitting poofing for the last 10 minutes. Now I'm gonna add four tablespoons of butter, melted butter. I did pretty good measuring this out. So four tablespoons of butter, three cups of flour, Pretty much level it because it's a in a bread maker, right? So it's got to be pretty exact. So three tables, uh, three cups of flour, and I'm just using white flour. They say that you know to use um, bread flour, which I have some. I could have used some actually. Next time, I think I will. Try to use some bread flour. And one teaspoon of salt. And now I'm gonna stick this in my bread maker on the dough setting. So the dough setting for me is number eight. So I'm gonna to go to the program and move it to number eight. And it's gonna take an hour and a half. And we'll come back and show you what I do after that. 
place. I just want to show you how full <laughs> the pot is. It's nice and boiling now, so I'm gonna let it boil for probably an hour or so, and I stir it constantly, like every five minutes I'm here and I'm stirring it. But, I mean, it's a big pot, and it's this much from the top. Now, one thing I would say about the spices is do one round and then taste it, then do the second round and taste it, so then you can have the amount of spiciness that you want. I just know that I've made it for so long that I know I have to go three times and then it's as spicy as we like it. So while this was cooking, the whole kitchen is all cleaned up. Okay, so this is an hour and a half later. I'm gonna take it out and show you what I do next. Okay, so the bread maker basically just made the dough for me, <laughs> which is awesome. So now we gotta let it rise for another hour and a half. So I'm gonna spray the bottom of a pan and I'm gonna form this into a loaf and then we'll stick it in here, put a towel over top and I like to put it on my stove because I'm cooking the spaghetti and so it has some warmth and I'm gonna let it rise for an hour, for an hour and a half and then I'm gonna bake it at 350 for about 25 to 30 minutes. I check on it as, as soon as it hits 25 minutes and then the bread is done.